So you've just finished working on an update for your app that is already available on the App Store. And now you want to upload that update to the App Store and make it available to your users. Let me walk you through the few steps that you need to take in order to make this happen. And it's actually pretty fast, though a bit repetitive the more you do it. So I have worked on a tiny little update for one of my apps here. And now I am ready to archive it and upload it to the App Store in order for my users to access this new content. So the first thing that I am going to do is increase the version number in Xcode. I'm not increasing the build because I want to uh, let Xcode handle that itself. But of course, you can also manually uh, increase your build number. That is up to you. One thing to note here is that this version and build number don't really matter. Now they have to go up eventually also for your own uh, sanity. So you know what you're working on. And the build number, as I mentioned, is managed automatically by Xcode. Usually there are some issues from time to time, but this should be automatic. But this version number doesn't have to be the same version number that is on the App Store. So we will set that in App Store Connect in a second. This can really be anything. I like to keep the two exactly the same. So in this case, I changed it from 1.14 to 1.15. Now the next step is not mandatory, but I would highly recommend you to create a git commit with everything that you changed in this version or create a pull request or however you manage your repository in order to know in the future what changed with each update. So now that I created this git commit and ignore this iOS 15 branch, this is just for an example here, we now have to archive this app. For that, you go into the product menu and use the archive option. And this will usually take a few seconds up to maybe a minute or a few minutes, depending on what kind of device you uh, run this on or what kind of device you use to, to archive your app. Now with an M2 or with an M1 uh, Mac that I'm using here, this is pretty fast. And also given that this app uses very few dependencies, if you use large dependencies like Firebase or something like that, and you have a, an Intel Mac or an older Mac, this might take a few minutes. So don't worry about that. But once the archive is done, this organizer window will open up automatically. And now in this organizer window, you just hit distribute app. And where previously we had several different options we had to go through. Now we can just select test flight and app store and hit distribute. And this will now fetch the app record, analyze the version, do a bunch of different stuff in the background, and then finally upload your app to the app store. While we're waiting on this, let me switch over to App Store Connect because in here, once you have your app selected, you will create a new version by clicking this little plus icon here and you will have to assign a version number. So in my case, this is 1.15. Once again, this doesn't have to be the same version number that you used in Xcode, but um, for organization's sake, I would still uh, make sure that they are always the same. Then in here, you have to enter something in the what's new in this version section. This should accurately describe what you changed with this version. Some apps uh, put bug fixes and small improvements in there, but as a user, you, you usually appreciate if there are actual patch notes. So what you can do is use a tool like LaunchBuddy, for example, to automatically create this string based on the tasks that you worked on, or you just write something yourself. It is also to note that you have to do this for all of your supported localizations. This app is only localized for English US on the App Store. But if you localize it to another language like German, for example, then you would have to also localize this what's new in this version string for each of those languages. Going back to Xcode, the archive was uploaded successfully, which means we can click done and close this organizer window. Now we are done with the Xcode part. Now we can move on to the rest of the stuff that we need to do in App Store Connect. So after you filled in that what's new section, you have to select your build in this build section here, but you might notice that it is empty right after you upload your build. This is because processing the builds takes a bit of time. We can check that by going into the test flight tab here at the top of the screen. And then you will see a list of versions. And now we notice that our new version has finished processing and we just need to fill out this compliance app encryption documentation. So you fill this out and hit save.
So now that this was filled out, you can see the status of this build is ready to submit. So we can go back to the distribution tab and add it into the build section. So scrolling down here, we now have an add build button. And once we click that, you will see a list of builds will get loaded. So in here, these are all of the builds since the last version that you uploaded or since the last one that you submitted. So I submitted 1.14 build one last time. Now only the 1.15 uh, builds will show up. So I will select uh, the correct one, hit done. And now it is uploaded or attached to this version. And you can see the app icon is also included. Now with that and the what's new section filled out, you can hit save. And then there's only two more things you need to do. Before we actually submit this update for review, you can check how you want to release the version. So by default, it is set to automatically release, but you can also set it to manual release. So Apple will hopefully approve the update. And then you will have a button to release to App Store or distribute app. I'm not sure what exactly it is called, but uh, that, that will be available to you if you select manually, manually release this version. You can set it to automatically release once it got accepted or automatically release once it got accepted, but no earlier than. So this is good if you have some time sensitive or time dependent content in this update. I'm setting it to automatically release this version. And then we just click add for review. This is very important. You've clicked add for review, but you haven't submitted it yet because you can theoretically add several items like also in-app events or custom product pages to a single submission. Now, in our case, we are only submitting a new app version, which is 1.15 build one, the one that we just uploaded from Xcode and the one that we just wrote the what's new string for. We have added it for review. Now we need to submit to app review and then we're good to go. Then it usually takes a few hours to a few days before Apple has reviewed it and then hopefully it will get accepted. If your app update gets rejected, you have to do this entire process again, or at least create or fix the issues that Apple tells you about, um, archive a new binary and add that to this version. You don't need to create a new version every time your app gets uh, rejected. This is basically the process of updating your app on the App Store. Leave a like if you enjoyed and comment down below if there's anything you're wondering about regarding iOS development and I'll try to get into it.